recording for us so you can get this get this done. All right. You're all set. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL uh, to order. It is December 8th and it is 10.32 a.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. And I'll provide instructions if needed. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. All right, I'm going to first make sure that everyone can be heard. Um, Mandy. Present. And Darcy. Yes. And Paul. Present. And I am expecting the other uh, two members of our committee. I've not heard otherwise, um, but uh, I think we're going to get right at it. Paul has about 30 minutes and then he has to go. Um, and so today's agenda is uh, solely devoted to the town managed performance goals uh, for 2022. And I'm gonna put up on the screen in just a moment, the most recent uh, draft. Paul has seen this and he has submitted some comments um, last night about 9.30, um, I sent that, or put that, excuse me, in SharePoint for all the members of the committee. Uh, I don't know if you've had any chance to look at it yet, but we're gonna go through it. Um, Paul also offered some comments on the second half of the performance goals, which is great. So we're gonna work our way through that for the next 30 minutes. And then um, we will hopefully uh, together uh, draft a final version we can give to the council on Monday night. Um, let me share the screen and let me put up, all right, let me find it here. Um, that's, there it is, that's it, okay. And so I'm gonna to put this away. I'm just gonna do some business on my screen for a second. Let me put that away, put that away. Actually, I'm gonna put that over there, okay. Um, you should see on your. I'm sorry, Ed. Uh, you should see on your screen the uh, most recent version of the uh, performance goals, and um, the track changes are marked in the right column. You see, Paul has one already under policy goals, climate action. But before we get to that, um, any comments, concerns about the first section, um, the preamble? Okay. Are you oh, asking us, George, or Paul? I, yes, this, this, no, I'm asking uh, members of the committee. This is just, I'm just talking about the preamble right now. We've been through this already, but any, any other issues or concerns with the preamble? Okay. Um, and now we're going to go through uh, uh, item by item. We're going to start with climate action. And um, Paul, you have a series of comments in this section. And yeah. I think, why don't we just, uh, why don't you take, take the lead here with your thoughts? Great, thank you. And these are, most of my comments here are uh, after consultation with our uh, sustainability coordinator. So the first one, I just wanna make sure that, and, and most of them I don't think necessarily need to be changed, but just wanna make sure we're all on the same page when it comes time to review next year. So the first uh, uh, bracket at number one is implementing the community choice aggregation. So, um, so we are, uh, it's unlikely that this will actually get done in 2022. It depends on DP, DP, DPU review. Um, and more, more realistically, it'd be 2023. Um, mm -hmm. So um, just so, you know, if it's like, oh, you didn't do it, therefore you failed. Um, I want to be, um, uh, be clear about where that stands, at least. Um, could we say beginning to implement? Would that make any? Order? Well, I think we want to make more. So we make substantial progress. I would say. Okay. Um, so it could be make substantial progress on. Yeah. Making. Um, any thoughts? Go ahead, Mandy. Darren. Yeah. Um. I guess. Yeah. That's fine. So, it just keeps it out there. I'm. I'm just going to again. This is just making substantial progress on implementing. Sure. Is that, I mean, it's a bit wordy, but. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense if, you know, I mean, as long as you continue towards that mm -hmm. final right. thing and, you know, do what okay. you can, some stuff's out of your control, so. Okay, okay. Um, okay, item four. This, item four was the second one. 
and this is the oh yeah so i was just a little bit conf confused i know this is um and talk with stephanie a little bit about this um and really didn't know what this meant and i was trying to think well what would i do to respond to this and would it mean that i've done workshops for all the committees and one of the things that stephanie suggested which you don't have in front of you um it's it's a way to she says it's a way to develop a formula or a pathway so um it like developing a simple um decision making flow chart and holding a workshop with department heads to guide them uh to if we were going to be more advanced she thought that we'd have to hire a consultant to help us with a with developing a metric for doing it so i just sort of want to know where what the council's anticipating with that number four and so i can take notes on that mm -hmm. I think that's along the lines of both of those things, probably uh -huh. along the lines of what the climate action plan um, assumes. In other words, whatever, <laughs> by all means necessary type of thing. But uh, so what uh, would be evidence that we've achieved that goal? I guess I, I'm wondering, given what you just said, Paul, if we can change the word educating into developing a method of, or, you know, a, you, you use the word matrix, developing a matrix to permit, you know, and then it would be town multiple member bodies and staff to apply a climate action lens or something like that, or developing a method to aid multiple member bodies and staff on applying a climate action lens mm -hmm. to decisions, something like that. Would that be better? Yeah. But you yeah. want to say developing and implementing, right? So it's not just spend the whole year developing it, right? Right. But I mean the the evidence would be we have that we've we've got something and this is how we're using this, we've got this matrix or whatever in our decision making. This is what we're so what, what, why, yeah, instead of getting into the weeds, mm -hmm. Paul, I would think that if you, you know, it's evaluation time in a year from now, um, someone might say, well, what did you do about item four, you would say, and you would give the answer, you just, you know, you'd say we developed this matrix or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if, if that's, in other words, this is fine, and you, these kinds of things you're suggesting, it sounds like we'd certainly satisfy four, rather than trying to us guess what you might do. Like this, uh, instead of fixing you with a specific thing you've yep. got to do in this case, the answers you're, the things you're suggesting would be at, would certainly sound like they would address this. So okay. I, I think this is fine as it is. Um, right. Because, yeah. Um, okay. I, I think so too. But, and I think that those things that Paul mentioned are, would be excellent evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. That, right. that we right. are right. progressing right. in that area. It would be nice to be able to not just show the form, the matrix or what, the flow chart, but to show how it's been used. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good. Uh, and then number five was, you know, like a timeline for transition. And yep. this is where I sort of stumbled a little bit. Like we don't know, as I think I mentioned, we don't know when there's going to be dump trucks available that are electric. And so, but I guess what you're, what the council is saying is we want something like a simple sort of, um, scale that shows how we're making progress towards electrification of our vehicle fleet and what we're doing on our buildings to meet climate action right um, yeah i think so and i mean i we have a we have so many vehicles and you know some of them are in in a place where there are um potential there is potential for transitioning them to ev some of them are you know on the cusp like you know, all the snow shovels that we, all this truck, you know, small trucks that we have in the school department, they may not have EVs available for them yet, which you could just yep. say. Uh, so, but, but you know, we want to have something where we're trans, we show how we're going to do this within a 10 year period. Yep. So it's like monitoring how we're doing it and with a plan. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it, again, it, it goes without saying, but this is as, as budgets uh, and you know, right. as technology and budgets allow, obviously, right? right. right. We, right. We, and I I would add, Paul, that we put this into the capital inventory because we thought that I, the original thought was, I, I think the original proposal was to have a completely different document, and we were like, no, let's add it to this so that it's mm -hmm. all in one. We're not recreating a wheel on things, and it's just there. Yep. So right. and adding that, the columns and doing what you can with the columns to me would would you know, satisfy that to me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, right. And that already has, I believe, 
the ages of the vehicles. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so that would be a big part of it right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I'm going to throw in some apologies. I've been in a meeting since. I hear a voice. What? Yeah, voice, and I'm here. Was it Christmas past? Is this? Uh, Welcome. Is this? Uh, um, many apologies. Okay. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. So I'd let the record show that uh, uh, Councilor DeAngelis has joined the meeting at my God, 10:42 a.m. We got to move faster if Paul's done in 18 That's minutes. That's correct. So we uh, greetings, uh, Councilor, and uh, keep going. Keep going. Ignore thank me. You. Wait, I well, just wanted to get on the record. Thank you. All right. So, Paul, we go on to the next. Is that correct then? Yes. Um, all right. So, this is community health and safety. Um, yes. Uh, so, the, the number two is just, I mean, this, this presumes a positive vote from the council. So, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone want to put a date in, 13th or 20th? I don't know when it's coming up the agenda. All right. So, we'll just have to leave that yep. blank. Okay. Okay. Um, Paul, you had a question about the language here. To, so the description to provide services to respond to issues of homelessness, mental health, and other non-criminal calls to emergency dispatch. Yeah. Um, you want to I, dispatch only? I would. Um, I would just delete. I would just put a period after the word calls. Hmm. Okay. Because they yeah, may come into yeah. it. There, there's a discussion about having a private number for hmm. Cress. All right. So provide services to respond to issues of homeless, mental health, and other non-criminal calls. Calls for assistance, maybe. And okay. other, yeah. Okay. Like that. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Bear with me. If you can. Okay. Okay. Uh, economic vitality. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so we'll start with this. Yeah, I do not want to create another position, and I think, um, I think we I have some language. Did I put language in there? Um, yes, you did. Yeah. Creating a, a but perhaps say creating a leadership structure to oversee parking policy planning um could it be assigning a staff member is that too specific uh what do you think um I, leadership structure is come what somewhat cumbersome but yeah go ahead we we don't think this is a dedicated position that does right. this i mean right. without we're not going to have any room in our budget to create another position right so i just think that you want this you want to centralize the work and have a, a sort of a more um accountability for the work i think that's what the goal of this is and to try and put some language in that that meets that goal instead of saying hire someone because mm -hmm. that has significant budget implications. Mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with that proposed language that Paul. I am too. What is the proposed language? Oh, here it is. Uh... Yeah. Um, so it would say um, creating a leadership structure to oversee parking policy planning and implementation hmm. it's not the nicest words but yeah okay um yeah. okay I have a comment george please go ahead i'm go ahead i had commented before paul that um that i was concerned about this because of the overlap of transportation with all the climate stuff um mm -hmm. And because transportation is like a third of our the sectors that we talk about in the ECAC, and your language would allow that to potentially be integrated with with a sustainability staff too, um, you know, or have multiple responsibilities that would be related to climate and transportation. So, okay. George, just on your draft, you need to add the word parking. So creating a leadership structure policy. to oversee parking policy. Thank you. Otherwise, it, it's just overseeing Every policy. policy. Right. <laughs> I, no, creating a leadership structure to oversee parking policy, planning, and implementation. Is that the oh. language we wanted? So it's not transportation policy? 
that's where I'm struggling with. Um, so the original downtown park, the, the three, four, and five were the original downtown parking working group recommendations, Paul. And so we just copied them word for word, um, which was dedicated for parking management positions. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. that's why it would be a that's why Paul suggested I assume the parking policy because that's that's where these three came from was the parking working group. Mm -hmm. Planning and implementation. Okay. Further thoughts? Yep, Paul. And then, and then the fifth one, I, I just, you know, I, I, I was even with the downtown parking working group, as there, we do have a transportation fund where the the sort the revenue stream comes from various um, parking systems. Um, so I don't know what this, how we would, what we would do here. So maybe your memory is better than mine, Paul. The council had referred to a finance committee the this particular point for any suggestions mm -hmm. on what to do. Do you remember mm -hmm. have any remembrance remember memory of the finance committee recommendation on that? I don't. And I don't either. I think we probably need to talk to Andy because I guess so. I would say if the finance committee dealt with that recommendation whatever they recommended and came back to the council with might be the better wording. So, I mean, we can, uh, we have, uh, I'm, what I'm saying is that we have this already. So that would be an easy goal to meet. <laughs> <laughs> so the, keeping it here isn't a problem for me because I, I agree with it. Um, so it just. Uh, so the question becomes, why is it here since it's already exists? Well, uh, but I yeah. think what Manny Joe's saying, let's clarify with, with, FinCon, maybe. So seek clarity with, so here, just a note to myself, we need to seek clarity with, uh, or reach out to uh, to Andy, or reach out to uh, finance. And see if he can what, if he can. Um, to, to, to what their recommendation right. on the referral was, because there was a referral way back in 2020 on this oh. matter. At least, I think it was 2020 when the, these three came out of CRC. Okay. Right. And then right. I believe the motion was to refer to finance this item for something. Okay. I will reach out to Andy and see if he has any, if he has nothing to add, then it stays the way it is. If he does, um, it'll, I'll put it in the, uh, the next draft and then we can look at it Monday night. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay. For capital uh, investments, uh, your next comment, Paul is, um, I think uh, something to the effect that it requires town council action. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's sort of, again, one of these things where it goes without saying, but, you know, it's always good to not, not have, have goals that I'm fully responsible for and, mm -hmm. it's, and don't have to depend on others for action. action. So can I, can I ask a question on these two? Because yeah. obviously you remember Monday night, there was a lot of discussion on these and they might change wording. Um, mm -hmm. Is beginning schematic design phase doable in 2022 if that wording stays the same or is that you know for the fire station or is that something that's not even doable no that's if definitely we fund it and all obviously definitely doable that's a goal okay definitely and a goal same for with both the of them. securing a new yep. location absolutely okay. okay so and we're keeping but i put the language in here based on our discussion on monday night with securing a new location or locations for mm -hmm. the department that's that good. The That's committee's better. okay with that as well. Okay. All right. All right. Any other changes? We're going to mm -hmm. move on if otherwise to housing affordability. And um, and so Paul, here you have a comment from Yeah, Peter. so on so on these things. So it's interesting because um, right now we don't run a shelter. It's it's a right. private nonprofit that runs the shelter. It, um, and so if, you know, I'm thinking, well, suppose that nonprofit decides to move their shelter to Hadley or to Bel you know, Belchertown or someplace else. Suppose they, d does this require us to build a new shelter or to create a new shelter in Amherst because we want it in Amherst? Um, and I think, you know, we're, you know, or if the shelter goes out of business for whatever reason, it's not going to happen, but just, you know, I'm looking at all the eventualities. Um, so, if, so it would require me to advocate with Craig's doors to say, no, don't move it across the border to Hadley because, well, it doesn't say in Amherst, does it? Uh, it no, item two is ensuring the continued operation of a seasonal shelter. Item three does have in Amherst and says ensuring yeah, the operation. Yeah, it does. Right. Although the council conversation 
did have a recommendation to delete those words. Yes, it did. And I, I want to push back a little on that because um, I'm not, again, um, I think the history of this is pretty clear to most people. Uh, Hadley's not building a shelter. Belchertown's not building a shelter. Uh, Shootsbury's not building a shelter. Sunderland's not building a shelter. Uh, even Holyoke is a challenge uh, these days. Um, Springfield, I assume, is, is reliable. Um, Greenfield, right? It's, it's a regional problem, I agree. But it seems that, and this is a question for my colleagues and for the council, um, do we want to go on record that we want to be uh, a, a player and an actual uh, permanent uh, source of, of shelter in our area, because I don't think we can rely on those other communities. Um, so I, you know, somebody give me an argument for why you want it, other than Paul, for why you want to take out in Amherst uh, from item three. I'll do it. Because Please, if, if Paul, taking out Amherst allows Paul to continue to truly advocate for a regional solution, including with Northampton on and, and other surrounding communities that might then allow um, at the state level, um, because then it can be argued and be worked with. He, it will allow him to also work with Sunderland and Leverett, Shootsbury, Hadley, South Hadley, Granby, right, Belchertown to, right, to go right. to the state as a group and say, we need money. And this shelter, even if it's in Amherst, or maybe Amherst isn't the best place because it doesn't have the building, but maybe Hadley has a building, but it will serve all communities and it, it will allow him more leeway. As you know how much I want this shelter, Georgian, but I think Mandy is right. My concern is that we've been trying to do a regional thing for a long time and it it's never worked. So there's part of me that just wants to say in Amherst because maybe we'll actually do it. So, um, but no, I hear what you're saying yeah, about flexibility, Mandy. I'm sorry, George. No, no, I interrupt you. Um, my feeling is that, that if a regional solution arises, item three is not gonna be a problem. No one's going to complain. Well, Paul, there's a regional solution now, but we still want you to build a shelter in Amherst. Um, I think this gives him greater flexibility because he can come to the table and say, look, my council is committed to us to being an active player in this. We have done this since 2011. Um, originally, Craig's Doors, uh, my memory, I've been told this by a number of people, um, actually, Craig's, Craig, Craig's Doors was approached to run the shelter in Amherst. It wasn't something that they... They were doing something different um, and they were asked to take over the shelter and they did. So for the last 10 or 11 years, um, they've, they've done it. Um, and uh, if we take this out, um, it's, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not happy with this. Um, what if we, we change it from in Amherst to for Amherst residents? Mm. I know that that brings in the whole resident issue. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what the goal of this is, if I can right. jump in here, George, Please, is that, that we the council wants to make a commitment by the town to support not to support a seasonal and development of a permanent shelter, a permanent year round shelter. That's the mission. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, my response is like, OK, right now that's been done by a third party. It's like if you said, you know, so. Um, and I don't control what that third party does. Right. Right. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I, I guess, you know, like there, well, you know, the third they, party they, wasn't they, in the business of shelters until the town came to them and said, we need somebody to run a shelter. Apparently, uh, the uh, larger entities, CSO, uh, there was one even, there's mm -hmm. another one that was even bigger. Um, and, and the folks in Northampton don't have a very good record. They just got their shelter open a, a couple of days ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, the track record of larger entities in the region and even of our Northampton partner has not been uh, all that impressive. Um, okay, I, I, maybe it's something the council is gonna have to discuss. Um, I, can, I can put a line through it. I can just take it out. Um, I'm thinking that, um, oh, okay. 
Um, so, so Craig's story, I think I to interrupt you, George, is Craig's yeah. did run the, the Econo Lodge in Hadley. You know, that was an option. Right. You know, the, that's where the hotels are. That's where the, the motels are that people are trying to trans, you know, right. That right. we don't right. have, we, we have one, the UML. Right. So, um, yeah, it is a regional problem. And that was, and yeah. the regional solution is, is essential. So, um, okay, I think, okay. Okay, we're going to take it out. Um, and if I want to raise it, I can raise it at the, um, I mean, I'm not sure there'll be a report. This may just be oral, but um, when we get to this point in the discussion, I may ask my colleagues to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to weigh in again. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we have also played a previous one. What role does CRC expect to play uh, in implementing the plan? This was yeah. an earlier comment. Go ahead. Yeah, that's just like, how, how <laughs> does... Um, so we're yeah. delegating a responsibility to the CRC and so, yeah. Yeah. So the council's already referred the implementation of the comprehensive housing policy to both the town manager and, and community resources. That okay. was a referral the day we adopted it. And so that is a continuing referral that will continue on to the next council. So CRC hasn't had a chance to even discuss that yet, but since that mm -hmm. continu is a continuing referral, um, we came up with this language of working with the CRC um, because there's so much in that policy that that I think this committee thought um, on on I think my suggestion that saying you saying to you implement the comprehensive housing policy was just not feasible mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you're going to need direction from someone and since it's mm -hmm. already been referred to CRC that's where the direction is likely going to come from. Thank you. I understand. Well, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm not, this is totally not thought through. Uh, I understand what you're saying, Mandy, but it seems to me that the housing trust either needs to get listed in here or, or super, uh, there's a way for me that the housing trust supersedes CRC, even if CRC created the policy. Man, that's just a, so mm -hmm. you'd like to have the housing trust somehow integrated into this objective. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Mandy, I Mandy, your thoughts on that or thoughts of any other uh, Darcy? Uh, I mean, I, I don't oppose that. I'm just, we haven't mm -hmm. referred the policy to the housing trust and that is probably an oversight on the council's end. Yeah. If it's it's added to this, would that inspire the council to uh, the future? Well, we could even do it in this term, but um, are you okay with adding it or not? So working with the Community Resources Committee and the, uh, uh, the uh, what's the official title? The, uh, the Amherst Affordable Munis Housing. Yeah, sorry. Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. I have a question, George, just um, just uh, wondering, do, is there a precedent for the council um, assigning implementation of anything to the council? In I'm terms, just wondering, yeah, I just right. am surprised. I would, I, I guess I'm assuming that the town manager is the implementer of all, all the different legislation and policies. Am I wrong about that? Well, we, what this is saying is, let's just make sure it says what we wanted to say, that we want the town manager to work with these two bodies to implement. Um, that's different from saying that the CRC is implementing it. That was how I would read that. It's not saying we want CRC to implement the policy, but we want you, because this document is for the town manager expressing the intentions or, or desires of the council. We want you, the town manager, to work with these two bodies to uh, implement the comprehensive housing policy adopted by the council. So, so just to answer your question, Darcy, the motion that the council passed on September 27th, 2021 was moved to refer the comprehensive housing policy to the town manager and CRC for implementation. So that's I, what I'm basing my comment that. I'm just wondering if that was copacetic, you know, whether, whether there, I don't think there's any precedent for doing anything like that. 
I, um, I think it was because there's so much there that prioritization has to happen somewhere. But that's another reason for me to saying I want the housing trust to have a more mm -hmm. active role, an equal role to CRC and the town manager. You know that the and I'm not a collaboration that. between those three entities. I'm Sorry to make you a that. thing, Paul. And it does raise the question then for the town manager: What are you actually asking me to do? Um, uh, and how can I uh, prove to you that I've done this? Does it just mean that I? send a memo to these two bodies and say, you know, when do you want to meet and talk? Um, uh, it's- I, uh, Yeah, I, I think we would look at the, uh, if, to, if I, again, I'm thinking about this in terms of how I'd report to you uh, next year, um, look at the housing policy, look at what we've accomplished, talk about the process for, for choosing the, for prioritizing at consultation mm -hmm. with CRC and, and the trust, and then what, what we've accomplished so far. And I would also say it includes similar things to the zoning, which is if CRC and the council want to prioritize X, Y, or Z policy that, and whether whether that goes to CRC or some other committee, once that prioritization is determined, helping a bylaw, helping craft the bylaw, working you know in consultation to get the changes to the bylaw, if it's a bylaw, if it's not a bylaw, if it's needing money to you know, or dealing with finding town owned land that it's working with whatever committee to do that. Um, similar to what was the zoning housing one in a prior, I don't even know where that one is here. Um, the zoning priorities one from last year, which was working with CRC to implement those zoning priorities or draft them. Okay. Um. Sorry, for, I'm looking at another document. I've got two documents here. Um, ensuring the continued operation, ensuring the operation of, these were changes, as I recall, and I put them in, recommended by um, Alyssa. Um, we also had, a, and this is, I, I want to respect Paul's time, maybe we'll come back to this, but we had a colleague um, raise, uh, it's in your packet, um, this was Shalini on uh, workforce housing. Um, I'm not sure that's something that we can- I would ask us to come back to that okay. and try Fair to get enough. through Paul's sure. concerns first. Good. Okay. We, I've got more time to say. But, but then we'll come back, that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, racial equity and social justice. Yeah, so um, uh, let's see. I think you were concerned about how, if I understood your comment, um, let me see, it's down here. Um, you can't I, meet it. Right, and I, I felt that the language here is articulating a council goal uh -huh. and that the items are then things we'd like you to do uh, okay. to help us ensure. So I, I don't read this document as saying that you, Paul, and, and town right, are supposed to do this, but we as a council are committed to doing this and we then are asking you to do one, two, three, okay. four. Okay, is that's that fair. How, but is that how others read it or could it be worded better? I think that's, what do people think? So to ensure all community members are protected, listened to and served by their public mm. servants, da, 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 uh, by, oh. right? Um, I was just thinking, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking that if it's the town council, then it should say the, count, the town council wants to ensure, and therefore, Paul, you need to look at these things. Does that make sense? Well, I read but all. I, can, of I yeah, think this yeah. can, the, can be interpreted in two ways, and I don't yes. want him getting slapped because somebody's interpreting it that it's all on him. Well, take the above housing affordability, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, yeah. it, it, it's 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 yeah. an aspirational goal, and here's our, our, how we're going to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get right, right. It. Okay, and I, that's how I read this document in mm -hmm. general as a series of aspirational goals under these broad categories. Yeah. And then to the degree that we can, identifying specific actions yep. um, for Paul to undertake. Um, Good. And so we're not, we would not come back to him in, in a year and say, well, Paul, you know, uh, <laughs> there, there are people who don't feel listened to right. <laughs> in our town. How come you didn't take care of that? Right. <laughs> just, that, just as a side note, if you know folks who want to serve on the um, 
Community and Social Justice, uh, mm. Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Uh, uh, we 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 don't have a quantum of people that can sub to, to even to, you know to spot, fill that. Well, right? can I ask you if Jeremy Brown applied? Mm, well, maybe, no. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I, I'll talk to him because I thought he was going to apply. If you have names, I've been reaching out to people individually. Jen Moyston has as well. We're just trying to get enough people to yeah. get that interviews yeah. going. Okay. So. okay, okay, okay. And actually, you know, so well, anyway, we'll talk about that another time. All right, that is, uh, unless I've missed something, that is the policy goals. Then we would move on to management goals. Um, this is what we're supposed to be working on today and mm -hmm. wordsmithing, but Paul has a series of comments about each one that I think we should go through before we turn to wordsmithing. Um, and the first comment here, Paul, under administration, leadership, and personnel. Mm -hmm. So so the way I looked at this, I looked at the um, evaluations from the council, which I appreciate the time that you all put into it, and then you know looked at where I need to improve my work, and then this is one of them. and. Um, and so this is where I want to make sure I'm more responsive uh, going forward. Um, and and it specifically it was about this, you know, the police uh, with fire department staffing. Um, and because that was what were the comments in the evaluations referenced the fire department staffing, but and and I you know this doesn't really say that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's a question for us to what yep. degree do we, I mean, this is a very broad, doc, we have not touched this document. It is the same yeah, yeah. Just language like just, as the previous year. It is, and, yeah. Right, and there's no nothing specific here that you can sort of say, okay, they want me to do this. In particular. Well, so it's, 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 you know, it's looking what this was the goal from last year and then saying, here's how the counselor graded it based on this language. Right, right. right. And they said, you didn't do these things. Right, and so, right. We want better work on this. So, um, what specificically right. is that yeah. an agreement and instead of having I, I have individual counselor comments but i don't have the council speaking other than in the uh, the performance review document right. so if you want something specific to say i we really want this done just put it in here yes it'll get done so you don't have to discuss it now but that's no that my take. <clears throat> yeah. exactly under this category what are specific things we'd like you to be doing mm -hmm. okay so oh, increased staffing is what you're saying uh, well, it was one of the, there were a number of, as Paul yeah. saying, there were a number of things that individual counselors mentioned as not being fulfilled or being not satisfactory or what, not one of the top two ratings, I would say, mm -hmm. on this yeah. issue in particular. And it sounds like, Paul, the uh, most of the things that counselors talked about, you feel you can address within this framework of wording, but the one you're concerned about within this framework is the staffing issues is mm -hmm. that right mm -hmm. okay and in particular with fire right because there are budget implications for all these decisions yes, exactly. all along the lines right? Right. right all right again um finance seemed to be fine um again the language has not changed except for the fiscal year numbers again long-term vision um Paul has a number of comments here. Um, so again, I just I just copied what the council put in its performance review right. um, and sort of tracking it to the goal. Um, and then just saying like, right. or do you want to put these in the goal? I mean, I, this is very specific, but this is I just want to uh, ratify that the way the performance review was done is what you really see as being responsive to this goal. So I would reference the performance review. I mean, we can think about changing. It looks like many of them are number three in this long-term vision. Exactly. Not, not this all again, of them. Right, exactly. This is a challenge. This is a, a something for us today to see yeah. if we uh, can come up with some very specific things and then see what the council makes of it. Um, good. Good. And then we've got it right here. Like Paul has actually put the wording in the document. And, and the thing that's different here is increasing home ownership because that was, you know, 
that's a that's part of the housing policy basically right. um but you know and that's has shifted over time when i before i started here that they, they it was all about homelessness and addressing that and then right. Right. and most recently like the last year or two the trust has really shifted to being home ownership opportunity not rental opportunities so right. that's just sort of an interesting development for the town right. 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 so do we want to put those categories in I think that's something, Darcy, we need to discuss. Um, I'm, I'm, and I think uh, we as a committee now to need to, to, not at this moment, but uh, sometime this morning, begin to think about what we would like to put in. Um, I mean, you certainly can talk about it now, right now, but I think, again, given uh, respecting Paul's time, what I told him is at some point, we're going to have to do some wordsmithing and some thinking of our own. And um, I think that's a good question. I'm not sure we want to deal with it at this moment. I think we want to get through his comments in general. And then he can decide if he wants to hang or whether, mm -hmm. um, but. Right. Um, yeah, so I just okay. want to say, I, I you're bringing those comments, Paul. It makes a whole lot of sense. And, yes. um, you know, from Paul's perspective, I can see why he'd want them in there so that, you know, so that they would, you know, he'd get a better evaluation on them in the following year. You know? Well, he's just so he knows what he's being evaluated. He on. knows it, it would give clarity <laughs> to what number three planning for long term improvements to public infrastructure parks, con public ways right. means, so, right? Yeah, but, <laughs> That's but, so broad so, right now. But, right. Yeah. But, you know, this, this is our development of our goals, right? Last time, there were very specific goals, and I could actually check boxes, and the council was mm -hmm. like saying, well, that's not what we really wanted. We wanted effort beyond checking the boxes. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that was the council was frustrated a year ago because it was like did you do this and i could check box yes and then you you were stuck with your ability to say well he did what he we asked him to mm -hmm. and i think then i think in response the council said well let's be more visionary in our goals and let's do it this way right. but but also it always comes down to when you think about it and when you're evaluating you think about specific things so i don't think i don't even know if it has to be in here but it could be just a conversation post adoption of the of this that might be useful. I think what this, for me, illustrates um, as I exit and I think about the last three years is how difficult it is for us as a group of 13 to craft uh, a sense of where we want to go. Um, COVID hasn't helped, um, but we haven't had really, this document and the struggle we go through to craft it is the closest I think we come and at least we've come in the last three years to trying to uh, create and present a, a vision, broadly speaking, um, for the future. Um, and I think this is the only place it takes place, actually, at the moment. Now, maybe that will change in the coming two years. Maybe they'll come up with a better way of doing it. But I don't know what the others think of you think, but um, it's when we have these com this conversation, like we're having today and what we've had at the council last Monday and we'll have again next Monday, is, is to my understanding, the only time we as a body actually try to talk to each other about where we'd like you know, the town to be going. Uh, for instance, do we want to emphasize home ownership now? Do we want to insist that you know, we, we spend more, uh, focus more on infrastructure, uh, et cetera? Um, this list that is right here, um, this is it, as far as I can see, right? Mm -hmm. I would, I would say that we, we do want to be more specific and concrete because those are things that just keep being brought up right. over and over again. Right. And, I, and then, right, push down I, the right. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, we, we started out being so detailed in the first year and then, you know, we sort of moved toward being really high level. And I think a happy medium is, okay. is where we Good. should, you know, personally. Okay. I think we're working towards that happy medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that to, to, we will come back to this then. So definitely under number three, we'll come back and see if we can integrate some of these and we'll talk as a, as a committee and then we'll see what the council thinks. Community engagement, um, Paul, your thoughts there? Yeah, I didn't copy in from the, I was just looking at the comments from the council, from the performance right, review, right. so just. Right, but the same basic point, uh, something more specific and concrete would be helpful. Yeah, and I, I thought I had addressed this one better, and, and but obviously the council didn't agree, so that's why I'm trying to get better clarity on this okay, one. Okay, okay. Um, yes, I see what you're saying. Um, but I think, you know, there were two things that were, I mean, just quite honestly, when I did my self-evaluation that were big, I won't say fails, but way areas for improvement. One was 
the strategic partnership agreements and the other was the um, roads and sidewalks and transparency and that so those were, those are the two sort of glaring things in my mind that the council mm -hmm. identified which i had mm -hmm. also identified mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, any other thoughts from anyone? We'll come back to this, but um, I think Paul's put his finger on two. And one of them is is now highlighted as a separate yes. goal, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, relation to the town council, no comments there. And then the final, um, this was the creation of yours truly simply, but it's so the committee needs to weigh in, the council needs to weigh in. Um, I don't think I have any particular deep insight here, but I just put this in as a separate goal uh, titled it and described it somewhat and some of the language that's above should be stricken if it, this that gets accepted and the other question is does it belong here or does it belong under uh, policy goals I put it under management um, I guess in a way yes it's managing a relationship uh, and what this is asking is so, uh, a very specific uh, request um, which Paul seems to be quite open to at this point it's good to call this out as his comment um, go ahead Paul yeah, so I, I think this is useful for me. Uh, there are some entities who may not want to be entering into a strategic partnership agreement, and I can't right. force right. them to put their hand to paper. But um, mm -hmm. so the fact that this is called out explicitly by the council is a, 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 another tool for us. Um, and also, you know, I'm not sure if you saw the front page of the Gazette about what Smith College gave some money, not very much, to the city of Northampton. Everybody's a god, but but that right. creates more pressure. Right. My so colleagues, yeah, go ahead, Paul. please. Yeah, because we haven't discussed this language yet. But um, no. is there anything that you, when you read this that you feel is missing from the list of stuff like that mm. we should be mentioning? Yeah, you know? um, and and you you know more than us about what we might as a town need potentially. But are we missing stuff in this list that you'd like included in the list? So the things that we have talked about that, and this would be for any institutional partner would be um, affordable housing because it, it impacts their workforce. Um, economic development, especially a strong downtown is, is very important to the institutions. Um, you know, public safety, specifically fire services that we provide um, to all three campuses and, and ambulance services. We want them to mm -hmm. recognize their responsibility there. Um, education, maintaining a strong school system. Um, right. And we have about eight things that we've identified that we think are of mutual concern that they should be parties to. Um, so those are the main ones that we've identified. I don't, you know, I think, um, I think you've captured a lot of it. Yeah, I think it's most of it's here. If there's anything you see that's missing, please bring it up. But um, we have mitigate financial and social impacts to the higher education institutions on the town, especially as it relates to the quality of life in our neighborhoods yeah. and to the demand placed. I mean, this, we, could re, we could reorder that if people feel that we should stress first um, in municipal services such as public safety in schools, um, seek ways to collaborate on areas of mutual concern, yeah. in particular housing. It could include downtown, you know, vibrant downtown. I don't know, that's a thought for the committee uh, and economic development and the long-term financial viability of the town. Are people so, happy with that language? Go ahead, Paul. Let me throw one word in there. With demand on placed on municipal services, such as, and I would put in the word, um, add the word roads, public safety, schools, and roads. Public or, safety, sorry. safety, schools. Because uh, that's one place that we're working on. And public ways, maybe, not just yeah, roads. Public ways, yeah, public ways, yeah. Public safety, schools, and public ways. Yes, better. So, such as public safety, schools, and public ways. Okay. I know there needs to be a number one in here before to mitigate. So, where, where do we? Because you've got to? a number two at to seek to collaborate, but you never had the number one. Right. So, <laughs> to develop and plan strategic partnership. Right. Okay, we'll figure that out. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess it would be a beginning one. It, no, it would be at to mitigate. Oh, to mitigate right. one. Thank you. One is to mitigate. No, 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 no. No, one is to mitigate. One, one after college. to mitigate. Yes, after college and before to Got mitigate. Got it. So any other wording here, people, uh, that you want to add? Um, we need an and before number two. Okay, and two. Thank you. 
And are people happy with the placement of this um, in terms of under management goals as opposed to policy goals? Does that, does that make sense? That's where people recommended, I, that's where I put it. Uh, we're basically focusing on a relationship um, and we have above relationship with town council, we have relationship with the public, right? So long-term vision, community engagement. So I guess this is fine where it is. I think it's fine. You even added it in alphabetical order. Uh, that's just a natural. I do that without thinking. <laughs> I do a lot of things without thinking. That's why I get in trouble. Okay. Um, well, yes, Darcy. I'm assuming mitigating the financial impact means that they should be giving us some money. Is that yeah. yeah, I mean, it's worded, it's worded in right a way. Right on, Darcy. The <laughs> diplomatic way of saying it. Right, exactly. I mean, as opposed to, you know, yeah. simply give us money. But give us lots of money. Right. That's yeah, probably wouldn't go over well. But I think Paul makes a very good point that this is valuable to him, first of all, but also when he goes to these three institutions, he can now say, look, this has become a major objective of the council. So um, that gives him a little bit more leverage, I hope. Um, good. All right. Um, I think our task is to go back and wordsmith um, the management goals a bit, see if we can make them a bit more concrete. Um, Paul, you're welcome to, to stay and, and watch us in action, as, as terrifying as that can be at times. Um, but uh, I think I'll much, step off. I appreciate your yeah, that's quite considerations. All right. we, we understand. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paul. We do have one George, more can you make the whole thing bigger? It's got to be bigger. Okay, I will try. Let's see what I can do. View, um, zoom. It's a two hundred percent. I'm going to make it. Oh, it's two hundred percent or five hundred percent. That's fun. not good. <laughs> I'm afraid that's as big as I can make it. Is, is that? How about? Can everybody else read that? It's really it's, hard for me to read. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, five hundred percent. If you get rid of the comment window, it'll get bigger. All right. Well, that's how do no, I? No, no, no. On on your left, I guess that yeah. little revisions window. Okay. Oh, that thing. Yes, yes. That yeah, that's thing. helpful. I mean, and then you help? can make it a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can make it. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm sorry, I'm old and I didn't print anything out. So. Well, this is this is the best I can do. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> so George, go down to the bottom of your screen on the right hand bottom. Got it. Okay. Right hand bottom. There is a minus and a plus. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hit the there. plus. Yeah. Should be down here, right? Yeah. Hit the hit the plus. Hit. Got it. Got it. Thank you. There we go. That's Stay better. Wind. That's better. Good. Okay. How's that? I can do Thank more. You. Thank you, Darth. That, yeah. Thank you. All right, Mandy. Everybody, what do you want to do here? This is administrative leadership. Well, Darcy was trying to say something and I Please. spoke over yeah. her. So. Go ahead. I, I just had another comment on the strategic agreement. Uh, yeah. I was hoping to say it before Paul left, but I just wondered if we should add, um, you know, study best practices in other communities because there's a lot out there about other college towns yes. where where they've got been able to get money from the local institution, like Williamstown. Yep. Um, you know, maybe add that in there to, um, I mean, that's, that's different from the relationship with the colleges, but it's, it would be something we'd be asking Paul to do, which mm -hmm. is look mm -hmm. at best practices. That seems to be something that he would do automatically when investigating how to. But yeah. I don't think he does. And I don't think it's, a, I think it's a matter of staff time and energy. I think that Darcy raises a really, really good point. It's something I've always been frustrated by. I've always thought, okay, I'm going to go off. And some of you have done this occasionally. I know Kathy's done this a little bit, maybe Mandy, but ever, you know, you just go off and take a look at what another college town does. Right. There's actually an organization that I've explored it, and I maybe now that I have more free time, I can explore it some more. But um, that is devoted to town gown relationships, and they produce papers, and they have, you know, they have yearly meetings and so on. And so I think Darcy's absolutely right. There's an enormous amount of information out there. Um, no, I agree with that, and that's yeah. uh, that's also a process I use. But what I'm saying is, I think yeah. he would be using. I bet he's using it already, but I don't care. I, if it goes 
I, I'm okay. with Pat on this. The objective is to develop and implement strategic partnership agreements. No, for this, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and but, so I don't right. see us adding not to a, this. No, a, to right. add a third one that says investigate no, no, best no, no, practices. No, no. That goes elsewhere. That it goes seems elsewhere. to be duplicative of the objective of developing and implementing because in order to develop and implement, you need to do that research. Right. Um, you know, mm. and so. Okay. I but it might yeah. actually fit in one of these other. Um, yeah, I think it would belong elsewhere. Um, it and, might yeah, fit in yeah. one of the other goals. Yeah, yeah. Because I know I, I I won't say I know for a fact, but I would put a, a lot of good money on the fact that it doesn't happen, um, except in very isolated circumstances. Like somebody in planning, like Nate might go take a look at some other thing done in another town or city. But it's not systematic, and it's not, um, and it's not deliberate. It's just there's just not enough time and and people. Um, but it should be done. Um, anyway, you're right. It doesn't belong here, but maybe somewhere else. Can we go back up to? Um, we just start at number one. Yeah, I think exactly. And the language here is great, but um, fire EMS is really the thing that Paul focused on. It will really stand out given the nature of this way this is written. <laughs> because everything is pretty broad in general. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, go ahead. And and so one of the things I would potentially say not to put it in um, because, mm -hmm. and, and I've got two reasons for it. Number one, actually, I basically have one reason. At the time we were filling out our evaluations, we still had the ARPA planning outstanding and so we were filling it out with things, not knowing what was going on and seeing the initial ARPA funds. And then after we filled them out, Paul has come in and clarified and extended the four to two years under ARPA and has said that they will become permanent additions to the staffing. And so given that, people may have filled out their evaluations different. There's been a distinct change in that right. staffing level since we filled out the evaluations, if that makes sense. And so I, I don't know how much it's needed now um, as it's specifically related to fire EMS versus okay. All right. something in either finance or here, if we're looking about, about staffing, you know, plans for, you know, I don't know, expanding our staffing levels in general, right? We, we, when we look at our finances and we look at our budget, there's not really an ability to add positions ever. Well, guys, um, we just, we're just about to add 12. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not, I mean, sometimes I wonder about some of you folks, uh, we're about to add 12 new positions. Yep. So nobody around here can say we can't add positions. That's just not true. Whether we right, but I don't be. think that's what Mandy is saying. I'm yeah. Saying, yeah. And and we, you know, if we look at budget projections for the next five years, right, the budgets are going to be extremely tight. So saying that we're going to do adequate staffing, I think, is a myth. So do you put it in here, and then I don't know. I, no, you I, don't. You don't put it in here. I don't. Yeah, think. I don't think you should. Right. Uh, and so one thing right. I was talking about is, and, and this past year has been very enlightening, right? Because for prior years, we've always had, no, we don't have money. No, we don't have money. We can't add staffing. We don't have money. We pushed, suddenly we're adding, we have no idea what the actual That's, outcome of that will be on that the budget, but, but that, but pushing did made something happen yet. We're still not really in a place with a plan for right. how that will roll out over the next five years and how it will be funded. And so I guess one thing, and maybe it's in finance, not here, is to better be able to describe what those pinch points are that prevents the executive from saying, we have enough money to add one or two staff members somewhere. And, uh, you know, or we don't, or if we add them here, I, it, I'm not saying things well, and I'm not sure it's in administration leadership and personnel that it, right, it matters. Right, 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 but I right. do have a question, a comment that I'd made at the first council meeting on this one, which is number four. Yep. Well, are there two fours? No, there's, no, there's only, only one, one four. four yeah. <laughs> yeah, developing and implementing decision-making. Go ahead. 
and plans regarding road and sidewalk repairs that are transparent to the residents. Um, it hasn't been done. It hasn't been done for a couple of years. Uh, I would kind of like to make it stronger and right. maybe delete the word developing and and start with just implementing. Um, Okay, or, or yeah, so yeah, I, right. I don't know what it is, but but transparent to residents, that hasn't been happening. And so how do we make number four stronger to say we want residents to be able to essentially look up a list that says, here are our plans for which roads and sidewalks are being done in the next five years in the order. And here's why one thing went in or uh, how do we make number four stronger because it or more helpful in to potentially Paul on what we well, want. It could, it could be developing a comprehensive list of uh, planned road and sidewalk repairs that are transparent to the that residents. That are available to the public. Right, so develop, excuse me, yeah, developing a transparent, excuse me, developing a list of planned or of future. I mean, I'm just throwing it out here. Um, it, in other words, do we, I mean, well, I think what people want is a list that says, here's what's happening over the next five years or the next as many years as they can think out um, that people can look up. Uh, I think what, but Guilford and Paul will probably say is that, you know, uh, it's all dependent on how much money you give us. Um, no, we, we can't you, make a, right, go ahead. No, uh, I, yeah, how, what we get to is dependent on how much money we have, but the order is not necessarily, and it might be helpful for people to know what they are. So, and, and, who and make it available to the public, update it regularly. It's right now a black box is the problem. Right. Right. So, so potentially developing a list, developing a a list of future road and sidewalk repairs that is available to the public and updated regularly. That would be great. Um, we need the word that between repairs and is. Thank you. I think Paul's going to regret leaving the meeting. Um, okay, <laughs> developing a list of future uh, road and sidewalk repairs is available to the public and is updated regularly. I mean, I will send him a copy of this, obviously, after the meeting. Um, okay. Uh, let's look at the others quickly. Um, anticipating future needs and positioning the town to meet those needs. That's anodyne. That's, you know, you could even, you can even take that out. But I mean, what we liked about this initially was it was a wonderful sort of job description of, of the administrative uh, sort of side of a town manager. And we could leave it as it is because it's fine. But, you know, it's not really telling him anything he doesn't already know. Number four does tell him something. You may not want to hear it, but it says, uh, you know, this. So uh, that's also a place. One is a place where you could begin to think of what Darcy and I were thinking of, which is maybe it again belongs under long term vision, but suggesting that he explore or begin to explore, um, investigate other town, you know, other college town, blah, 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 something like that. Mm devising appropriate courses of action to achieve the policy goals of the town council. Again, anodyne, just, you know, okay, fine. Improving the delivery of services to residents and businesses. You know, and then an actual and then there's thing, right, boom. <laughs> well, he's, he's sort of dozing off and then four hits him right between the eyes. We want a list of all future road and sidewalk repairs that's available to the public and updated on a regular basis. Okay. I mean, it kind of stands out as not the same category as the rest. Right. This right. sentence is part of to provide leadership. And given what this the residents have been asking for, what the council has been asking for, while it's very specific, I think making that list available to the public and ensuring that it's available to the public would be providing leadership in this town given that it's been like a decades long struggle. As opposed to in, in, a, in the policy section under some other category, 
you know, that's where it seemed to, it would, in terms of the nature of it, the specificity and the, right. it seems to fall naturally in the first part of the document. Here, it really stands out. Um, but for the moment, let's leave it there because we don't know what to do with it. I think it's something that people want. I think it's something that a lot of counselors would say, yes, um, we can always put it somewhere else. Um, anything else specific that we could add to this, the first section? I mean, maybe that can go into um, community engagement. Up above, yeah. Um, down below, yeah. management oh, down, oh, Ah, down below, okay. Uh, okay. When we get there, we can think about it. All right, okay. Retaining, recruiting, and developing highly qualified, diverse, and effective staff. One of the comments and concerns has been attrition, um, ret retention, obviously, um, you know, mentoring. Paul has responded to this already. I'm not sure there's anything we could say here that would make any real difference. He's aware of it. He's, he's trying to deal with it. Maybe we just leave it as it is. I have a comment. Please, Darcy. This might be where we could put in some mention of uh, public safety, f fire and EMS staff. We could say something like, after effective staff, we could say something like necessary to fulfill public safety needs and town priorities mm. or something like that. I, I, I think if we're going to put that in, we put it in after okay. anticipating future needs and positioning the town to meet those needs, because this one is to effectively right. supervise and manage the workforce. Right. And what you just said, Darcy, is much more on the leadership. We'll supervise and manage. And so, oh, where is the other? To provide leadership by anticipating future needs and positioning the town to meet those needs. Why is this, in, again, in the policy section under public safety? And well, you know, just it, it seems again it's a public safety issue. Yeah, all right. It's not a management question, is it? I mean, there are different well, kinds of questions, right? I think that the the um I mean this this is the section that is about hiring people that we need. In other words, it, it's it goes to the question of yeah, the, the administration. Well, it has to do with simply, in general, broadly speaking, it's not specific to the fire department. It's specific to the to workforce as a whole. And it's right. a management, this is under management. Whereas right. if, if you feel like we need more firefighters, that is, you know, is the question that he's just not managing the relationship with the fire department appropriately? Or is the question we need more firefighters or we need to at least figure out if we have enough firefighters? And the reason for that is because it's a public safety question. Right. Or less police or whatever. I think it really doesn't belong here. Right. right. And, that in public safety, but the other issue right. is simply yeah. um, necessary to fulfill town priorities. So I is think that part of effective and appropriately administering yeah. the operations of yeah. the town. Yeah, I mean, because the health department is. Oh, well, we, sorry, have, we have recruiting here. So that assumes hiring, right? In other words, hire the people that we need to fulfill our town goals. So, you know, right now we, we you know, attrition is stretching everybody to max. And, you know, we have people that have 12 hats. Every time we add on a new priority, some existing staff person gets assigned it. And but quite literally, we maybe can't afford to hire more. And you know I pushed to, to bring on the 12 people, um, and I'm glad I did. But I, I don't feel like that the health department needs staffing. There's every department needs staffing. So that would so I would support maybe a more gen, a, a generalized statement, but not one targeting here, the police, the fire. And right. And particularly since I think the fire issues have been addressed um, for over the next five years, I think they really have. Um, mm. Maybe not as fully as the department would like, but realistically and carefully. Um, we don't know whether we need to decrease the police or increase the police. We don't know, and we won't know that for a while because we're 
we're hoping Crest will have an impact. I don't want a long list of departments that need better staffing because it's right. across the board. Right, it's but absolutely that's across the board. That's what I'm saying. Take out the public safety language that I suggested and just put in necessary to fulfill town goals. That doesn't change anything because if you if if right now it's necessary that the three people who've been doing the jobs of five people you're not going to fire one of them or you lay one of them off. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll step no, I back. But I'm just I, 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 I'm pushing back on the fact that we are um, so stingy with hiring new people. Well, to, because we don't have a budget I mean, that can hire new people. Right. There's no money there, right? right. Um, Why? Because, because we don't, because we rest on property taxes. Because we and put we have 70... a ton of land that doesn't pay property taxes, right. and we refuse to do a two prop two and a half override. There's a lot of reasons why there's not money, um, at least why people say there's not money, right? And we're seeing whether there is or not. That that goes back to my thing of we've been told for years there isn't money to even hire. It took ten years for them to figure out a way to put an economic development director at a hundred grand and two hundred total into the budget and find the, to do that. And then we get to Cress and suddenly we have the ability to do that immediately. And I'm not saying we have the ability, but it was found somehow, some way, and we might run into problems sooner rather than later with that. So is there a way we can put somewhere into a management goal? I don't know whether it's finance or long-term vision. I'm not sure it's administration. Something about staffing levels what about it though i mean that that's what i don't know right um we're all know. concerned that there's not enough staff for what we want as a town to do so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somewhere in finance that would be logical of some sort of report or honest conversation about what staffing levels would be logical for what we're demanding of our town and why we can't get there or what we have to cut or not demand of our town services in order to have right what are the impediments to, to that. our full and, staffing in departments right and, like and and is it is it cutting programs to fully staff certain departments and not having other departments you know because at some point the morale of all the departments, right? The health department, as you said, needs more staff given COVID and everything we're asking and stuff. At some point you can't retain staff when you've got, you're asking too much of them. Whether it be schools, whether it be public safety, whether it be health or even recreation. And so we don't wanna to get to a point in time where we're losing, maybe we're there. Um, but we have to somehow talk about that. <laughs> and maybe that goes somewhere in one of these management goals. Yeah, I, I, I would agree we need to talk about it, but I feel like we need to do more than talk about it, you know? Right, but it belongs in finance. However, we're going to list it, it belongs in finance, I That's think. Fine. That's fine. All right. Um, I'll be right back. Go ahead. Um, I think we're struggling right here to see if there's anything we can do to this. Uh, I really think that what we've added really belongs somewhere else. Um, Number four? We'll, yeah, I think. Um, I think it belongs under community engagement or could fit under community engagement. Right. And then what happens to four? Now that I've reworded it, um, four had, uh, I don't have the language anymore. Um, uh, if, I'm not going to make a change at the moment, but if we take it, if we move this, we just delete four. We would um, just delete four here and add something under community and get, add, add the language. To and, add, I don't know and, where it would be and, under community and, engagement. And, oh, I'm sorry, community engagement um, is. I think it could replace number three in community engagement. Hang on for a second. It could become number three in community engagement because number three is going to disappear. Three is going to disappear. So and I think. So it would be four, something. In administration could become three in community engagement. Which would be, uh, if you can, while I um, delete this. 
if you would just read out loud, let me just delete it. I'm sorry. Just, I'm just, so slow. I, I was going to say, just copy it and then paste it as number three. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. Just highlight the whole thing and copy it. Uh, I'll get rid of four in a second. Edit. Cut. And this goes. Because it really is a part, it, it's a item dealing with community engagement in a sense. Well, I think it's a place to start, I think. Um, okay. So we're suggesting is under community engagement. Uh, again, it has the same problem. These are very broad, perfectly anodyne sort of statements. They're not fine, facilitating flow of information, encouraging supporting new ideas, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then up, oh, develop a list of future road and sidewalk repairs that is available to the public and updated regularly. Bam. Um, but yeah, and then for maximize the contributions of time, multiple member bodies, the municipality. Um, again, it stands out. There's no way to, but it, that's probably where it belongs, unless we put it in, in under policy. All I right. Have another comment when we come back to community engagement, but we were going to move to finance, right? Uh, I want to still go back here for a second. So we have, um, and so. We're now taking that out. So you have to put an and before three. And, uh, Not that three, the, and the first three. three. Yeah. You know, it. <sighs> um. Yeah, one of the main concerns under item one has been the high rate of turnover and the perceived, whether real or not, lack of mentorship or you know follow-up. And I guess what we've been saying, and that's where we're probably gonna leave it, is that Paul has responded to this and he's aware of it and he's taking steps to address it. And it's hard to see how we could integrate it into this document at this time. It's something that specific. We want you to, in the coming year, demonstrate uh, what? Demonstrate uh, some kind of, uh, uh, what do we want to say? Uh, evidence of uh, stronger mentoring or uh, follow up. Uh, yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. part of this second number one. This effectively supervise and manage through retaining, recruiting, and developing a highly qualified, diverse, and effective staff. This is why I asked Paul in his comment whether, you know, because because there were a lot of comments about that concern from the council, and he didn't seem to think that this management goal needed reworded to exactly. it, it address allows, them. Right, exactly. Right. It allows us to ask him, and then he responds, and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. You're right. Finance. I don't see anything anything in particular we need to add here. So there were two comments. Yeah. Well, I have one request for number five, which is okay. getting get rid of studying and uh, just leave recommending and implementing structures for user fees. We mm -hmm. should be done studying by now. Um, right. So I guess okay. the comma after recommending would need to disappear too. Thank you. Um, but the other comment that someone made, and I'm not sure who it was at the council, um, was do we want to put anything on in here about ARPA funds, other grant funds, the management and disbursement of ARPA funds, reporting on the impact of the use of those funds and other major grants or something? So the, there will be a second um, phase of release of ARPA money. Right. And right. about what you're saying is that you want, someone is saying they want someone. to have sort of update or reports on, on how that money is being dispersed. So keeping well, the town council informed as to the dispersal of ARPA funds? So the way I had it worded here, so this is what I wrote down, someone was saying, manage and disperse 
ARPA funds and report on impact. So that was my shorthand. So it would probably be uh, make if we added one effective it... management and disbursement of ARPA funds and report effectively managing and dispersing ARPA funds and reporting on their impacts or something like that. I'm, I'm less concerned about the report on impacts, but the effective management and disbursement, I think it would be effectively managing and dispersing. Yeah. Dispersing, so effectively managing, dispersing ARPA funds. And I would think and updating the council, I don't know, I, I, I you know, uh, We'd like to hear about how this is, or do we? Um, or maybe it's effectively managing the first thing, ARPA funds. Anyone add anything to that? So it needs to be number five, and five needs to change to six. Okay. All right. I have a comment on six. Um, uh, okay. Uh, the Board of Health uh, is looking at uh, potentially instituting, uh, you know, solid waste fees for mm -hmm. uh, a new dollar program. Right. So I wonder if we could just scoot in there a and something like and potentially um, solid waste fees. Um, so just we have solid waste fees now that's the transfer station fees, so I think we could just say. Structures for user fees water fees sewer fees solid waste fees and permit fees. Sure. Instead of adding the potential in there since. Right, yes. So that's <laughs> Recommending and implementing structures for user fees water fees sewer fees solid waste fees and permit fees that consider the cost of providing services. Okay. I wanna go back to five for a second and just make sure that uh, I'm the only one who has the concern for a kind of, you know, uh, report back to us occasionally on what's happening with ARPA funds. Um, I mean, we assume he will effectively manage and disperse them. I, it's nice for us to mention that, but, um, do you feel that we should include something to the effect um, of reporting uh, on impacts and use? Yeah. Actually managing dispersing our funds and reporting back to the council and reporting to the council. Reporting impacts of or the impacts and use of the fees of the funds. Okay. So yeah, go ahead, Darcy. Was this where we were going to put in something about um, um, leading a conversation on the um, operating on staffing budget? versus funding? What was that again? I said staffing versus funding. That's not a very good wording, but that's kind of what it is. Uh, on um, on the challenge of providing adequate staffing. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. And now it becomes item seven in finance. But yeah, the thought was move it here. Oh boy. Um, I liked your challenge. Hmm. Or facilitating a conversation. I just, yeah, I just. I mean, I think it's, I think it's something that should come from the council, you know, from say from CRC or I don't TSO or something. It would be finance, wouldn't it? Or, or finance, TSO. whatever. I, some councilor body would want to uh, take a look at this. Asking Paul to look at it, it's just adding yet another task to an enormous suite of tasks that he's just not going to have. The time right. to do that's it. his that's his key job yeah yeah you know creating the budget and right. he is the master of you know right. 
he's the one that has developed this policy. It didn't really emanate from the council that I know of, of no new hires at, for any reason. There's no policy. There's no policy. Well, <laughs> there's a correct practice. It's a level, it's basically level funding. It's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's level, level ser services. services, level services budget. Because level services, which means level staffing takes up nearly the increase in funding every year. Right, the, the 3% oh, or whatever it is. That's is the conversation up. is like, how do we, how do we keep adding goals and not add staffing to fulfill them? You know, like how, how does that work? Well, it doesn't work, and that's what I, I think is going to happen in the next year or two. But that's I, I'm not going to be involved in that. So can, I wish some of you the best of luck. But um, can I try out a wording? Go ahead. Facilitating a conversation with the council on the challenges of providing adequate staffing for the municipal services desired within the revenue levels received. How about prioritized by the council? Well, this no. is just a conversation at this right. point. Yeah, I just, yeah. Okay. And besides, I, I really think this needs to come from the finance department that they request that kind of conversation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I guess I feel like it, that's the conversation that we need as a town to one of them have it out in the open, like, What's happening here? Well, that's where a counselor steps up and 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 makes a, a speech or a statement and says, you know, but that's got to come from the council. Asking Paul to do it is is I think is it's just a waste of time and ink and everything else. Um, if a group of counselors, that wouldn't just be one. If a group of counselors wanted to make this a major issue, um, that they feel that the town is not adequately staffing what the town wants to do um, and they want to make that an issue that's what they should do and then they can figure out how they want to do that whether they want to do it through a committee or they want to you know i don't well, know it, cer it certainly would be a study or conversation that would need to happen uh, with the planning department and um, i'm sorry the finance department um they, the finance department that, was only, yeah go ahead sorry pat no that's all right go ahead george no no please finish i was interrupting well, it needs to happen in the finance department. They're the ones that have the information about what it costs and everything else. But that the that we're asking that we're asking the finance committee to take a serious and very public look at funding. Because and and I'm not sure I want this to happen because it's very well very possible that we wouldn't have gotten the extra people on crests if the public had weighed in and saw the impact on the budget. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I can make a commitment to bringing it up in the finance department so, you know, in January and start talking about uh, that we need a conversation, a long ongoing conversation and understanding of uh, the financial implications of staffing. That's what we're talking about. I don't know. It sounds like what you're talking about is the implications of increasing staffing in certain areas that some counselors feel are not adequately staffed. Now, the most prominent one recently has been the fire department, but that apparently uh, through ARPA funds, at least in the short term, apparently has been dealt with. But uh, there are other counselors who may feel that there are other departments that are not adequately staffed in order to fulfill the goals of what they or that they think the town right wants. Well, this is why the conversation is so important. And that, right. that's, I do agree with Darcy because we wouldn't have gotten the commitment of the ARPA funds necessarily to for the four positions. And now those four positions uh, originally were gonna be dropped as soon as the ARPA funds were gone. Now they've been placed in the budget as part of the staffing level for the fire department in a per more permanent way, the way anything can, and yet, it's- Yet without a plan. Right. So, so if there are other departments that individual counselors or groups of counselors wish to uh, 
uh, bring to the fore and say, this department or that department also needs more staffing. But what I'm hearing is generally they, there's this sentiment or feeling that there's more, we need more people to do the work we're asking them to do across the board. That's, you know, right. Yeah, I, I, I think the question is, we might all be talking about similar things. The question is, does it go in a goal or does it go somewhere else or come up some other way? Um, it's you definitely know, because I, I think we're all finally realizing or starting to realize, or finally is the wrong word, that, that you know, we have a lot we want to do, including what's already being done, right. that staffing levels may not be adequate currently even for doing what not just the council wants, but what the people expect the town to be doing. And, and um, those are always gonna be hard conversations. Um, exhibit, exhibit I know a, I haven't figured out how to begin a conversation like that within the council structure and even the budget development and passage structure. Um, I keep, I'm gonna keep reinventing and trying new ways to do that, but what we need a conversation on, I think, is what levels of services and different types of services can we continue to provide in a way that adequately staffs those services so that we're not just running town, you know, town staff into the ground because we're asking them to do too much. And then we have this retaining, recruiting, you know, development problem because part of what that issue might be is what we're demanding of our staff yet we can't really have, we haven't found a way to have that conversation. So do we put that in a goal of, hey, Paul, please help us facilitate that conversation? Or do we do that some other way? Let me offer exhibit A from today's discussion. I would think that all of us would agree that uh, across the board, there's a strong desire for a uh, parking czar, for someone Parking is always a big problem, or at least a big issue, and downtown parking, right? And so we all would like to see somebody uh, hired to oversee that. What was Paul's response 20 or 30 minutes ago? He can't no do way. it. No way. It can't be done. Okay? So that's, 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 that's just a simple example of, you know, the, in a sense, the pointlessness of this discussion. Um, well, he said, you know, unless, unless the council simply says, we don't care what you say. We want you to hire somebody to do this. I guess and, what I'm right? saying is we need to have a council-wide conversation on that somehow and not just and not just accept every time we can't do that. Well, how could we do that? What would the consequences like th this is where I think we're missing a conversation. What are the consequences of doing that? Is that that we're, we're firing someone from X department because we have to maintain this total level of staffing no matter where they are, is the consequences that we're reducing X budget over here. Um, and and so, so yes, your, your example is great. The response was we can't do that, but that's as far as we ever get. And I think what, what I'm arguing for and maybe Darcy's arguing for and maybe Pat's arguing for is a deeper conversation. And so if you have that deeper conversation, do you put it in these goals or do you put it somewhere else? And maybe putting it in these goals to facilitate that deeper conversation is appropriate. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow night. Yeah, I doubt, I, we'll, I doubt we'll have a deeper conversation, but that's exactly the place for it to, to come up. But it's not, I doubt it'll come up. Yeah. Tomorrow night's where it should come up, but it won't. I would agree with with Mandy Joe on that. And um, I think that um, yep. Paul is where it all starts. I mean, he's the decider on this stuff. So that's why we need to have a conversation with him. But uh, I mean, I just want to caution us having a conversation with him, laying out everything that we want. Um, and having this deeper conversation doesn't then mean Paul is going to give us what we want. So first, it seems to me the council needs to have the conversation um, and huh? really huh? find a way to understand what what it means when we talk about our financial position. You know, 
Um, what yeah. it means to your budget when you hire 12 new employees and yeah, you don't have any way in, no, period, and, you don't, and you don't have any way of, of funding that after after year one or two that's what it no, means no well there except there's been a commitment to fund it so for we'll year one or two way, yeah, but right, exactly it right. may be it may be that we decrease the uh, positions in the police department if we find that crest is removing some of the burden that they have that that's a reality um, and it may not happen that way. We may find out that Crest doesn't work. Um, and or that it doesn't we would eliminate the burden that. The cops. I'm sorry, uh, what? Or that yeah. it doesn't reduce the burden on the cops. So it's it, not- It increases it. And I'm not saying any of this know. is true. All right, okay. Yeah. All right, so given that uncertainty, at this point, the conversation that you're envisioning is really moot. Um, there's not much to talk about. Uh, we're gonna have to see over the next two or three years how this uh, no, it's, little... It's not an it envisioning will. conversation with just Cress. What I'm saying is we need to have that conversation across the board as it relates to all departments, all desires, all everything. Right, right. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. we're Let, operating let Darcy on have a, turn, Mandy. a priority and this is a priority. And I think the town also needs to hear that conversation, which means it needs done in public and with the council so that we can actually as counselors get a better idea of where our residents prioritize right. the funding too. But Darcy's been trying to say something. Sorry. Please, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to say my observation from the last three years, you know, working pretty closely on a, a couple of projects is that you know, I know that municipal government works slowly wherever you are, but my my uh, observation is that Amherst moves about twice as slowly as other municipal governments because of the fact that we're so understaffed that everything has to go twice as slow, and. Um, you know, I can give you examples, but I don't really want to because I don't want to highlight problems in different departments. But, you know, uh, the climate action plan probably happened twice as slowly as in other towns. And the community choice aggregation, you know, everybody's saying, well, how come that's not up and running? It's because staffing problems within Amherst, that's what it is. So, um, and it isn't any, anybody doing anything, you know, intentionally. It's just piles of contracts in the accounting department that they can't get to, et cetera. You know, it's like uh, I I feel for the staff very much. I'm so, just saying, yeah, we're very okay. very slow in getting in accomplishing stuff. So there's a desire expressed by some of you to put something under finance related to a long term or to a conversation about how to, um, and I think Mandy, you had pre presented some I language. Some language yeah. yeah, let I, I I'm going to write this down. I think so we can it, see it needs to go into long term vision to maintain and manage the town's capital and public assets consistent with the council's long term vision. Okay. We, this is a conversation that would affect long-term vision. Hmm. Instead of finances? Yeah, because, I mean, it'll, it'll, it affects finances, but it affects, this is a conversation and nothing may change. And it may be the most incredible conversation in the whole world. So it, we're talking about it, that there's a long-term vision that in Amherst will have appropriate staffing levels and funding for that's those staffing levels in all departments or something. I'm not, I don't know. Let's just put the language up here for a moment to look at it. I'm gonna put it here, but we can move it. Um, and I'm gonna number it seven just for the sake of, uh, right. But Mandy, go ahead, give me the language. Facilitating a conversation with the council on the challenges of providing adequate staffing levels for the municipal services desired
within the revenue levels received or levels are bad words, but. Right. Okay. okay, unless we're gonna have to word that. Facilitating a conversation with the council and the challenge of providing adequate staffing levels given the level of municipal services desired, given the... Uh, um, and so the we can get rid revenues. of staffing levels and just do providing adequate staffing, given the level of municipal services desired. And then I had within the revenue levels received, but it's yeah. probably, but yeah. it, given the level of municipal services desired and the constraints of receipt of revenues or existing revenue levels or something or right. existing revenues received. So what you are, the three of you are asking him to do in the coming year and he'll be evaluated on is initiating a conversation with the council on this challenge. So and we're not asking him to provide adequate staffing. We're just asking him to talk about it. Because, because we can't provide adequate staffing given our current revenue levels. He would, he would turn to you, Darcy, and say, okay, you tell me specifically, you, the council, he wouldn't just turn to you. He'd turn to the council and say, you tell me which department or departments you want to increase staffing in. And then yeah. I will tell you how that can be done, or I'll tell you why I don't think it can be done. We but here we're just, smaller, I'm sorry? We can take a uh, smaller percentage from the capital budget. Uh, right, you, you could undercut your capital budget and use it for your operational budget. Sure, right. that's, that's perfectly legitimate. And, and in then this conversation, 10 or 15 years what would now, be the results of that? Right, you'd have your roads, water, sewer, buildings, et cetera, your, your trucks and, and et cetera would be in less good condition. I yeah. also think that this should say facilitating conversations because I don't think this is a one-time conversation. <laughs> You're right, Pat. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, I'm putting the language in here. It doesn't mean I agree with it at all, but I'm gonna put it in here because you need to see it. Facilitating conversations with the council on the challenge of, of providing adequate staffing, given the level of municipal services desired by the public and uh, existing revenue sources. Well, no, it's desired no. by, by, well, it could be by the public, but well, also just, the town just council, desi right? desired, you know, maybe just that. Yeah, we'll just leave it. All right. I want to move on, but. Um, Does it belong in finance or long term vision? Let's take a look at long term vision for a moment, come back to that. Yeah. Um, because what we're asking him is to ensure the town's facilities and infrastructure are well maintained, developing a five year. Now, is this correct? He still is developing? No, or? I mean, I, I had a yeah. comment that we should reword that because we have a five year yes. capital improvement program yeah. now. Um, so so uh, updating what? or maintaining or. So reporting on the progress of. I, I would say updating or maintaining. I don't know which word's better. Okay. Every year he has to do it, right. but we have one and now it just needs forwarded on, right? So updating, updating maybe? The council or maybe updating the council. Um, uh, just the five-year capital improvement program. Updating. The. The, okay. All I right. think we can add the sentence we put in finance after planning for long-term improvements to constant, you know, blah, 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 the last number yeah. three add a yeah. four or put, because all of those things would affect staffing. So you'd like to take seven and put it down here as four. You take, move this and put Wait, it here. Wait, where, where are you seeing seven? I'm sorry. Se seven words, and up above, Finance. we have facilitating conversations. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You want that down under long-term vision? Maybe. Or okay. Or what do you guys think? I mean, it almost sounds like it's more of a long-term vision, right? I mean, yeah. it's a financial thing too. It crosses both, but really we need a long-term vision conversation on staffing levels and levels of municipal services and what services and and that's a vision of our town. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to put it under long-term vision to me. All right. Um, so I'm going to... For the moment, whoops. How are we doing on time? Okay. I do want us to get through this. The idea is that this would be then presented to the council on Monday. Is it on the agenda for Monday? I, they haven't set the agenda yet, but uh, they will be setting it today, probably. Did I just do something wrong here? Okay, if you just cut it or copy it and then paste it and then yeah now now paste it below and for some reason it didn't okay um, undo that and just hit copy all right sorry okay where did seven go it disappeared okay well here you can type it again if you want i've got it no just undo what it okay six seven is out there somewhere repeat typing no Edit. Okay, let me try this again. There it is. There Thank goes. you. Sorry. All right. It needs an and and it's number four. All right. And the and before three would get deleted. Thank you. And then Paul wanted us to talk about the specificities of number three. Uh, okay, which is planning for long-term improvements to public infrastructure, parks, conservation, land, recreation, land, and public ways that ensure public accessibility, safe use, and sustainability. He, he <sighs> yeah, if ahead. you open up his comment, you can see his comment on, on what we said in his performance evaluation. All right. Is it possible to move it over a little bit so that I'm we can? I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I got uh, get the picture. Is that are you able to see that still? Yeah. Only part of it. How's that? No? There we That's go. Good. Okay. Uh, this again is the problem we're having with this particular section of the document, which is the the language is aspirational and broad, which is fine. But at the same time, we're trying to figure out how to put something in there concrete that doesn't, right? So um, roads and sidewalks, we've already brought in. I think that's been dealt with. Um, Is increasing home ownership in here anywhere? It seems like at the moment, no, it isn't. It isn't. I mean, um, that should go back into affordable housing if we want to put something in there in. Right, right. And um, I think that, you know, that may broadly fall under the uh, working with CRC and the housing trust on yeah. the housing issue in general. Um, and the plan on this one, the planning for the use of a vacant elementary school and a youth empowerment center is, is already included in number three, long-term improvements to infrastructure, you know, all of that. Um, In other words, you, without it being explicitly stated. Right. And so should we be explicitly stating them? We haven't explicitly stated Hickory Ridge, but that's going to be in here, right? Like. Right, 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 right. Do we want to put the increasing affordable home ownership in the affordable housing section? Hang on to that, Darcy. I think that's a possibility. Um, I'm not ruling it out. Certainly, Shalini raised it. You've raised it. Um, there may be others that want to raise it. Um, I just want to settle this first before I, we're bopping back and forth between different sections here. Um, I realize it's here in Paul's comment. Um, 
So that's, is there so anything? The yeah, is, do we need to get more specific in the long-term right. vision to allow Paul more, to give Paul more direction? Right. Given our review of him. Right. And I don't see anything here. So are we going to say to Paul, is the council going to say in a year, you didn't create a youth empowerment center. You didn't plan for a vacant, I mean, there's, there isn't a vacant elementary school at the moment. Um, for in the next year, there won't be. And there won't be the one after that. And the after that, there's going to be, those schools aren't going to be vacant for some time. Um, so that's not relevant. Um, sidewalks has been addressed, I think. Um, I, there is concern about our infrastructure, particularly sewer and water lines. Um, and you know, there's a report somewhere, probably in DPW, um, on, on the long-term, you know, what's the long-term plan there? Um, is that wanna be, do you wanna highlight that in this coming year? Um, Hickory Ridge, parks and recreation land. I mean, there's the issue of uh, athletic fields, which has been put off and put off and put off. Um, there is a, uh, a, a document that uh, outlines what we should be doing in terms of our recreation uh, fields, our athletic fields. Um, does someone want to put that in here? Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like this one, if we make it more specific, we're going to be sitting at the council arguing over the specifics. Exactly. Why recreation fields instead of this or why, right, um, right. There doesn't seem to be anything in this list that jumps out at us that we'd say immediately everyone yeah. wants this in here. I mean, I think number one and three cover everything in the list except home ownership. And so we're back then to Darcy's question. Maybe we'll just scroll back up um, under, uh, this is, takes us back to the other part of the document now. Um, uh, you getting, passed it. Oh, sorry. Um, Housing affordability. affordability. Okay, let me just shrink this if I can. So I can see, I'm gonna take the comments out at this point. All right. Uh, the suggestion has been made by at least two counselors that we introduce something to the effect of, I mean, I would argue that- An emphasis on home ownership instead of just rental. Yeah. I mean, this so provide says, access to safe, affordable housing for low and moderate income residents with an emphasis on home ownership uh, over rental? I mean, well, I don't know where you'd add it, but I think counselors have, have asked for that right. emphasis. Some counselors have asked for that emphasis. I'm not sure where you would put it in here unless you create- I don't think you need it. I mean, if you're providing access to safe, affordable housing, that, that includes rentals, it includes home ownership. I know, but Pat, the idea is that I'm not saying I agree with it, but the suggestion of Darcy and, and Shalini and perhaps others is that for this coming year, we'd like you to, we're, we're thinking, we want you to focus on home ownership opportunities. And that maybe that's well, kind what of- about, maybe, yeah, go ahead. To provide access to safe, affordable rental housing or housing for low and moderate income residents, both rental uh, and uh, I don't know. No, okay. I, don't, I, know, yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. only thing we could maybe where it could go is number one, working with CRC to implement the comprehensive housing policy with a priority on the home ownership goal. Mm -hmm. But there's five goals, right? Like, are we going to set out which goal we're going to prioritize next year? Yeah, see, I don't feel comfortable with saying prioritizing that goal. Uh, it's a very, very, very important goal. But it's equally important that that residents have access to affordable housing that they can rent. Um, well, that so, won't stop. The question is whether we, and that's a question, whether we as a council have enough of, there are enough of us on the council that would like Paul in this coming year to put, to put particular emphasis. He's not gonna not think about the other four goals, but partic put particular emphasis on home ownership. That's how about, how about this language um, for a number four? Maintenance and creation of home ownership opportunities for low and moderate income residents. 
So that would be, you know, uh, trying to protect neighborhood moderate income housing and also creation of, of housing opportunities. And how is that different from one? A huge issue in our neighborhoods, you know, mm -hmm. is the yeah. buy, buying up of moderate income housing by and flipping student rentals. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It's something yeah. I know at least one incoming counselor wants to work on. Um, it's something a number of us have, have certainly looked into and 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 talked about. Um, it's happening all over. And well, what about happening for you? Right access to safe, affordable rental housing and possibilities for low. Um, home ownership for low and moderate income residents by bump. Okay. What was that again, Pat? Something like to provide access to safe, affordable rental housing and, um, and possibilities for home ownership for low and moderate income residents. Yeah, I think there, I don't know, I, I think there also should be in their protection of. All of that's part of the comprehensive housing yeah. policy goals. Right. That's right. the right. thing. And so implementing that policy is how Thanks. we start doing it. And so that's why I say, if we want to prioritize one, a specific one of the comprehensive housing policy goals, that's probably where we would need to do that or a motion from the council. Um, but I think maybe it makes sense to leave this. Uh, Darcy can certainly bring it up. Shalini can certainly bring it up. Anyone can bring it up on a Monday night um, and see if they can convince enough of their colleagues to um, uh, want to put in specific language related to home ownership. Um, but at the moment, I think um, we are not of one voice by any means. Um, I hear that request, um, and I think it should be brought up. Um, on Monday night, but I don't see any language I can construct now um, that would um, satisfy all of us. And so I think it's something the council is going to have to talk about because technically one covers it, but I agree that, that uh, I mean, if the council could come to a consensus that they really want Paul to focus on priority, prioritize goal number one of the five, I'm not sure we could have to, that'll happen. But it, Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this, I think, okay, um, as it is. I think we're down to the last one, relationship with the council. Yeah, now Paul seemed happy with this. Um, yeah. I, I got the sense people were okay with its placement in terms of here, and we went through the language while he was here. Um, no, no, the one above. Oh. Oh, I'm, sorry. Council, I'm sorry. Council, council. That one. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. So no one had any comments. We need to get rid of the space before the number three and after the parens, just on a cleanup matter. Okay. Um, I, I had one thing, and I'm not even sure I agree with it right now, which is on number two that says providing support to council committees. I wanted to add the word appropriate support. Mm. I, like I said, I'm not mean? even sure I'm, 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 I'm just, I, are the committees getting, maybe adequate's a better word, an adequate level of support, particularly are the committee chairs getting an adequate level of support? I mean, you can provide support that's not adequate. Again, though, this goes back to all staffing levels, right? Exactly, right. It's <laughs> Everything right. goes right. back to that. Right. So I'm not even sure. I'm convinced we yeah. should change it. I also I feel like there. chairs you're saying particularly chairs of committees, but chairs require very different things uh, from staffing. So what you might consider adequate, George might consider inadequate. inadequate. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I don't think I'd like to add that. Okay. I, I think that we, as we do put pressure on staff and departments just by governing no matter what. But I think that there's, you know, I think there some committees have put more pressure on than seemed reasonable in different instances. And um, let me just so. throw something out here quickly. I know we're really at end of time. Um, and so people may need to go and we do want to wrap this up. 
but I gave Paul a document uh, about a month ago um, that I've used, and I've shared it with a number of you over, over the years, which is sort of like a fact sheet, just sort of a, you know, that I, and he agreed with me. He said, this is great. I mean, not the particular document, but the idea of, of having something that every year would be updated by staff. It's the same old problem who would do it, right? But just a basic fact sheet on population, demographics, you know, number of staff employees, you know, the current ta average tax uh, burden on it, you know, just a, a simple fact sheet that counselors would have that they could trust was, was accurate. We just had the census, so the census numbers would be updated. Um, but, you know, when I sent that around, you know, people said, oh, thank you very much, but it, maybe it doesn't really matter that much, but it just, it always strikes me as strange that we often called upon making decisions as we are, and we often don't have at our fingertips just basic factual data information about our town, uh, how many people live here, what the demographics are, you know, how many kids are in our schools, um, you know, and it changes obviously on a regular basis. But anyway, that was something that I felt should be provided to all counselors by staff. Um, I created it. I shared it with some of you. I shared it with Paul recently. He thought it was great, but I have a feeling it's just going to be like all of those things. It's just going to fall through the cracks. So it means when you are making these decisions, you either have to find out yourself or just don't know uh, some basic data points about our town. And, it, you know, so that would be something that I would suggest is concrete that uh, would be nice if, if, if he could provide that to you every year. Um, but that's not, that's not in here though, right? No, exactly. I'm just saying, I mean, it, it would be a concrete example of what it means to, to provide support to the council would be providing on a yearly basis, updated. Um, uh, 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 I don't know what the term would be. I call it a data sheet or just a basic, uh, you know, list of factual information. How many people work for the town? How many people employed by the schools? What's the average salary of a teacher? What's the average salary of a cop? Um, you know, what, uh, how many, what's the demographics of our schools? Um, you know, uh, you know, what's the average tax, uh, uh, burden on, a, you know, what's the, the average home price? What's the average tax burden? Uh, what's the current uh, tax rate? It changes. Obviously, this year it just went down a little bit, even though the tax burden will go up <laughs> because house values, property values have increased. Um, but nonetheless, that's, you know, it probably will never happen, but that's a concrete example of something that should be done and could be done, but somebody has to do it. Can we add that to the, can we I don't know. I mean, I, wording it would be, you know, um, it, it, well, I could I could mention it at the at the council meeting on Monday and just you know, Paul would probably say, yes, great. And I'll, I'll see what there's I can do. so many things. This is getting back into right. specificity of goals. There's so many yep. things we could list in terms of documents and that things like we want him. created and yep. at the yep. tip of our thing, yep. right? That yep. we don't want a list of just check these two things off and you've satisfied this goal. We want him to be able to use his creativity and his, right, right. you know, leadership abilities. Um, right, right. You know, so I just bring it up because the, the I, I didn't know whether providing support for council committees was strong enough or whether we needed an, a sort of describing but, but, yeah, but, what yeah, level right. of support we're looking for, right? In terms yeah. of evaluating that one. So take GOL, you know, we just, we want KP law to get back to us in a reasonable amount of time, but, you know, and Paul does the best he can, but you know, sometimes they don't. Right. So that's why I think I had originally appropriate support. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, it's fine that either we could add an adjective. I don't have a problem with that. I really like George's idea. No, it's a great idea, but I, and maybe you can bring it up, you know, the two of us starts, you can bring it up on our way out the door. And just say, you know, this would be great if, if over time Paul liked it and he, and he put it in his little folder. And I, and I'm sure, no, I'm sure he was serious. He meant it. But, uh, you know, uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, that, I think uh, yeah. It's a lot more than a fact sheet. Like Mandy Joe said, it would be a, it would be more like a list of documents that what? was, created, you know, a document page on the website or something. Um, that would also be publicly accessible. But you know, it would be great. That would be great because there's a lot of that stuff that we didn't get when we first started. Right. You have to find it yourself um, um, and then hope that you got it right. And if you send it to somebody in town hall to have them check it, you have to go through Paul. And that means it usually doesn't get done because he just 
there's only so many things you can do. So, you know, you just hope you get it right. Right. All right. Um, so final doc, is people okay with this? Location, yes. language. I think it's really important. I'm glad it's here, but okay. So um, one last thing, sorry. Go, um, go, go, go. Community engagement, Paul's comment. We don't have what we evaluated him on that language from the evaluation memo in the comment, but um, minus the strategic partnership agreement comments, um, what are the types of things he needs to address in this community engagement? I think he was looking for a little bit more specificity in one, two, and what is now four, I guess. Yeah. I actually think he does a really good job in this area. So I was a little surprised by some of the comments of my colleagues. He works really hard to engage the community on a number of different levels. So I guess your question is a good one, Mandy. Those of you who are critical of him, or apparently there have been some, what specifically are you wanting him to do that he's not doing? Uh, less cup of joes? Uh, you know, fire the CPA, uh, you know, uh, uh, community protection officers. Um, uh, I, so what is it, you know, I don't know what four means, maximizing the contributions of time, multiple member bodies to the municipality. I have no idea what that means. You know, if somebody can tell me, I'd be happy. I don't, I'm sure he doesn't either, but. Um, I, I think the intent of that was when, you know, using, using, not having multiple member bodies just for the sake of has, having them, using them in a consultative fashion and then listening and taking their ideas, maybe not always following them, but I think TSO, this is one thing that TSO has actually done well with, right? Go to DAAC, go to TAC and say, hey, this is a decision we need to make. What are your suggestions? And then you take them into consideration as you make your decision. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I see number four as, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, getting towards or getting in it. And it's interesting to watch that play out because you can see the tension that creates. It, it seems to have worked out okay, but you can see how you're stepping on toes. Those committees are stepping on departmental toes. And um, there's a certain amount of tension there. And maybe, maybe that's just unavoidable. And I think I agree with you that what TSO has done, I think overall has been a good thing. I'm not sure everyone in town hall would agree with that because you've got now citizen committees, you know, making recommendations in areas that traditionally have been handled by town departments. And I think right. there's a certain sense of, you know, trespass and a certain sense um, and, you know, so be it perhaps. Well, uh, and, and that may be the conversation, right? If, if yeah. the town, if the council likes that, then we leave this in. If the council, you know, doesn't like that and thinks, this that is inappropriate, then we need to reevaluate the committee structure and, and so what their we, roles so are. The, la right? the language here could be clearer then because I don't, when I read this, I don't hear what you're saying. Okay. Um, but that's that's a good, very good point. I don't know what the others think. That that's a good example of where a, um, a council committee has drawn on the expertise of town multiple member bodies to the advantage of the, we think, to the advantage of the town. Um, so that's kind of what four is saying. And we could give that example, um, uh, or we could just leave the language as it is, or we could make the language a little bit more, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, to some extent it's about, you know, like maybe lessening our workload and letting some of the some of the committees that have stepped up um, complement our work, you know, uh, like TAC has done, right, and, right. and facility yeah. access advisory committee, and so on. Right. Um, so maybe the language is fine as it is, because Maddie could just—I mean, we could point to that example, and that would illustrate it. Um, but he was looking for something more specific here. Can we help him at all? What did he say again? Uh, uh, where is it? No, no go up. Okay. It, it's this, this is another goal that I, you need to expand that comment. Let's see if I can. Yeah, and let me open it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And the question he's asking us, is there some things from the uh, I mean, strategic partnership agreement's been taken out. Are there other things that we want to put in here um, in this item? I'm looking at, I have a printed copy. Um, it's usually, it comes down to DPW. I mean, people just complain about DPW. That, that seems to be the gist of it. And, you know. Which is where see, number three comes in, in some sense. Yeah, but I, do people have a sense that somehow we need to wrap their knuckles or, or you know, I mean. Oh, that's true. It, it was a lot about responding to residents to close out questions and interactions. Right. Almost, right? I mean, I use C click fix and it works beautifully. You know? Until you don't know whether anything's been done with it. Well, I, I, it sends me notices. Well, actually, I'm not sure it does tell me. It doesn't tell me that the thing I complained about has been taken care of. Right. It, it just notifies me of stuff that's in my neighborhood that other people have complained about. <laughs> that's all it does. But when I go back and check, it's been taken care of. So your point, I guess, is the follow up or the letting people know. But my experience, as limited as it has been, is that when you do ask them to look into something, they actually do. The two or three times I've done it, um, they have taken care of it in a timely manner. But your point is that but people don't know it. Um, well, in most cases, you know it because you go by and it's you know the light is now working or the, well, I'll, the, I'll the give sign you an example. Been, go ahead. If someone doesn't want a light to work, right? That the light is trespassing on their own ground, um, right. is too bright. And is that when you send a C-click fix, nothing ever happens because nothing will happen. And there's no communication coming back and saying, you know, we can't fix this because X, Y, Z, or this is how it could happen, but you need X, Y, Z number of people that, you know, or the policy means we're just not changing it. There's no follow-up if- Who's gonna if do this? Things like that. Well, this I mean, that's it. the thing. This is I, the I don't, right, right. you know, we're sitting here talking about we're understaffed, we're understaffed. Right. And the other thing that's true is when people assume nothing's happened, that's not necessarily accurate. Uh, there are times, and, and I think to me, the issue is much more. Guilford makes statements frequently that aren't true about follow up and stuff in public meetings that are inaccurate and he doesn't get called out on it now, at least to my knowledge by Paul. So that feels like the issue, not whether or not Paul or somehow or other is gonna make sure that every citizen email call, whatever is taken care of. Uh, I, I don't know, okay. I, right. so I, and I'm, getting, not, I'm yeah. getting really tired because I'm really hungry. I've been in meetings since eight o'clock. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not sure there's any language we need to add here unless somebody has something specific. Um, and we're not going to name a particular uh, town of, of employee no. or department. I, and I don't so, think we should. Right. I don't think we so should. So unless there's something specific people want to add, the answer I feel to Paul's con concern here is that, in fact, you're actually doing a pretty good job. And, um, you know, uh, as far as uh, strategic partnership agreement, that's been put in another part of the document. And uh, we've asked you the specific thing that he may not be happy about is three, developing a list of future road and sidewalk repairs. He may come back on Monday night uh, and say, you know, who asked for that? <laughs> Darcy that had her in? hand up. Go yeah, ahead, Darcy, I, just, sorry. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, I have to leave uh, to get somewhere by one. Um, I understand, so we're way over time. All right, sorry. Okay, all right. So we're not voting on this or anything like that. We're just going to send this document on to, um, to the council. Uh, to council for Monday. I'm wondering if we should just clean, just have it as a clean document and take out, I, I'm not sure we want to have Paul's comments in there. No, so, we don't so, want Paul's comments. I think there. so. I think it should just be uh, presented as a clean document and people can then say what they want or make changes. Ooh. That's my suggestion. Anyone? One um, thing I did, because yeah. I've been keeping and tracking these changes on mine, um, yeah. I accepted all of the changes we presented to the council last week in the policy goals. 
Yeah. And then have a tracked version of just what we changed from last week to this week in the policy goals. Um, and then okay. I have tracked in the management goals what we did today, which All means right. it's still it's not a clean version, but it's a cleaner version. And it doesn't have allows Paul's... people to truly see what's different between last week and this week in a sense. Does it have Paul's comments? It I, I can get rid of Paul's comments. I would take Paul's yeah, comments. Yeah, please. Out. Yes. Yeah, I think, yes. uh, but good. So you have both documents in a version that the counselors could read and, and work with. Because what we have right now is, is kind of a mess. I mean, yeah. and I would just take what I have I, on I'll, the screen. I'll send you what I have after I remove Paul's comments. Okay, all right. And I will submit. The other quick question before we go um, is, and we have still three people here. I'd like you to just approve, uh, I don't know if we have to have a vote, just allow the chair to approve the, the final minutes that we have without us having to meet again to do it. I, I don't even know if we need to do that formally, uh, but I'd I'll like to- I'll make yeah, that motion. Yeah, to just uh, whatever whatever minutes- to Allow the chair to approve the minutes, the remaining yeah, and I second it. Remaining minutes of this committee, uh, which would include last week's meeting and today's meeting. And that motion has been made and seconded. I'm gonna to go to a vote, uh, Mandy. Aye. And Pat. Aye. The chair is an eye, so thank you very much. Final thank thing, you, I don't think we need a meeting next week. Uh, before we do that, just yep. note yeah. that there's no public in attendance for public comment. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Mandy. Why um, don't we keep it the, the next week's meeting on the book and decide after Monday night whether we need to... Ah, you're thinking that too late yes, to post true. after Monday night. That is true. Um, oh, okay, okay well, so no, post you could it. post. You could post it, it could and then be canceled. canceled. Exactly. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. All right. Good. That's the answer. Just I will post it, and uh, we'll see what happens Monday night. Right. Because we can I, always cancel. Uh, right. Other than fiscal, other than the manager goals, I'm not aware of anything else that we need to do. Well, then maybe we don't. Well, that so the I, only reason I, we I would do leave it, yeah. it on with a with the same agendas today, just in case right. we need to come back with massive changes to the goals. Right. After exactly. conversation, that, that is, that's certainly a possibility. Good. That's what I will do. But I, I guess what I'm asking the two of you, and I'm sorry, Dash is not here, but also, but is there anything else you can think of that you want on a future agenda? Not right now. Moment, no. I can't think of any. Okay. If you do, let me know. But at the moment, good. All right. And and George, thank you. It if we don't need to discuss the goals again. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will get that from you later this morning or this afternoon, Mandy, and I will yes. post a menu a, a agenda for Wednesday, which hopefully we will be able to perhaps cancel. We'll see. All right. Um, I thank you to both of you, and I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned. And uh, Emily, again, thank you very much for your patience. I'm sorry we went over. And the best of luck to you uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care.